across health, livelihood, and uh, the general conditions on the streets. जैसे कि प्रोफाइलिंग होती है प्रोफाइलिंग हम प्रसेंटों की कहते हैं तो उसमें से बहुत सारी चीज़ें निकल कर के आती हैं जैसे कि उसके चेहरे से बताने लगता है कि नहीं ये झूठ बोल रहा है या सही बोल रहा है क्योंकि वो जब झूठ बोले क्योंकि हम चार पांच बार उनके साथ बैठ करके बातचीत करते हैं तो जब वो झूठ बोलता होगा तब उसके जो हम क्वेश्चन करेंगे उसको घुमा देगा वो बात नहीं सही तरीके से उसको नहीं बताएगा और दूसरा कुछ उसमें जोड़ने का प्रयास करेगा इसके साथ फिर उसमें से और चीज़ें निकलती हैं जैसे उसका पहले उसने क्या काम किया और अब क्या काम करना चाहता है और उन कामों में क्या क्या परेशानियां आई और उन मतलब नशा कैसे करते थे अब नशा छोड़ने चाहते हैं नहीं छोड़ना चाहते हैं इस प्रकार का और वो काम कैसा करेगा मतलब कैसा करना चाहते हैं और घर जाने यहाँ पर कैसे आए मतलब कैसे यहाँ पर कैसे आएँ तो इन चीज़ों को जान करके हम उनसे निकाल सकते हैं कि नहीं इस बंदे को क्या ज़रूरत है किस चीज़ की ज़रूरत है इसको काम की ज़रूरत है या घर जाने की ज़रूरत है या यहीं पर रह करके कहीं रूम लेकर रहना चाहता है या फिर और भी जो भी उसकी प्रॉब्लम है जैसे नशा छोड़ना चाहता है तो उन चीज़ों के बारे में हम समझ सकते हैं समझने के बाद फिर उनमें हम काम कर सकते हैं जैसे हम प्रोफाइल बनाते हैं तो उसको पूरी तरीके से पढ़ते हैं समझते हैं कि नहीं इस बंदे का क्या मतलब किस चीज़ की ज़रूरत है तो उस पर फिर हम काफ़ी लंबी लंबे समय तक बातचीत करते रहेंगे हो सकता है नशे को जैसे छुड़ाने के लिए हम कल कंटिन्यू उसको मोटिवेट करते रहेंगे और काम से जोड़ने के लिए भी उसको मोटिवेट करेंगे और उसके आधार से यदि उस, उसका मन होगा तो उसको काम से फिर हम जोड़ेंगे various aspects of the condition of homelessness across health, livelihood, and uh, the general conditions on the streets and the problems of accessing shelters. We use the method of life histories in a variety of ways. Uh, the most uh, important feature of the life history in our work is that our field site is a homeless shelter in which homeless men come for healthcare. It's a health recovery shelter where we have a staff, a doctor, a nurse, and field workers. And the field workers there record the life histories of homeless men when they come to the shelter so that we have an understanding of where they've come from. Many men come from rural India, in the states of Bihar, and Jharkhand, and uh, West Bengal. Many men have spent years on the streets in Delhi itself or sometimes in other cities. And because all of the men have health problems, they've come to the shelter uh, seeking health care. We also record the problems of their medical history and the health, their history with accessing certain forms of health care. Um, but what the life histories allow us to do is to become more familiarized with each person. There are 60 men at any given time at the shelter and uh, they're there for a variety of reasons. 30 men have infectious diseases, uh, tuberculosis, HIV, sometimes both, and uh, 30 men have suffered road accidents or uh, various kinds of physical injuries. The importance of a life history for us is to try to understand as best as we can what the trajectory of each individual has been. And those individual stories help us understand at least uh, a snapshot of one or two components of the condition of homelessness, whether that be in terms of health, whether that be in terms of livelihood, uh, whether that be in terms of safety. Um, the reason that we do this, uh, why do we do this? The reason that we do this is because when we're, as we're working with people on the margins, uh, it's not enough um, just to provide a certain service. Uh, the uh, position that we have there is one that is uh, 
we're dealing with certain vulnerabilities. So why do we use life histories in our work? Uh, one of the goals of the overall work is to understand the conditions uh, in which homeless people live uh, so that we can better understand how best to provide services. That's one uh, area. But in order to do that, we feel that in order to do that as best as we can, it's important to understand the actual trajectories, uh, the actual lived experiences that these people have had. Um, and that's important because we're working with people who are on the margins. And each of these people have very different stories. It is true that there are they belong to a certain category of homelessness, but that is not uh, the only thing that defines who they are. In fact, uh, there are many capabilities that come out, uh, many talents, many uh, skills that uh, come out of conversations with people. People have been employed in various forms of work, they've been apprenticed, they have had been earning members of their families at some times. And then there are obviously the groups of burdens that many of these men, men have faced. Health problems, problems in access to public institutions, access to programs that should have been there, uh, access to social support. And although each of these things are patterns in the overall community, the Individual stories tell us much more about the extent of uh, a deprivation or the extent of uh, perhaps hope that is uh, still there. So we use life histories uh, to provide a nuanced perspective of the condition of homelessness but through the lens of individual stories. And our hope is that those nuances will inform policy in a way that's more attuned to the problems that homeless people face. Uh, thus far, policymakers have already acknowledged that there is too little information on the uh, what's called distinct vulnerabilities that homeless people face. And that can be in access to public programs, in uh, health burdens and consequences, and uh, issues of safety, particularly with respect to not being able to uh, find shelter um, or uh, life on the streets. So each of those issues uh, we try to look at through, through the lens of how people have actually lived through those experiences. And we hope that taking a composite of those, taking groups of men and women who have actually lived those things in their day-to-day -day lives, will inform people who uh, in this country who do make the decisions on those matters. Now, life histories can take many forms. Uh, our form is the written word. Our form is uh, narrative and, uh, you know, providing uh, the, the stories of these people. And I think it's safe to say that life histories in various media are uh, all around us. You see it in the news, uh, of course you see it in literature, and you see it in film. And I think that the, uh, regardless of what the output is of, uh, of the life history, of this method, uh, I think the important thing to recognize is that the person that is involved in that, the person that is uh, spending time with someone, whether they be on the margins or not, or whether it's a matter of uh, critical importance uh, or not, uh, is that it is a chance for the person that is engaged in that activity to learn very, in a very concentrated fashion about the life of somebody else. And in, in some ways, we have that experience all the time through conversations and through relationships. But the method of life history allows one to enter the consciousness or the life of somebody, even if only for uh, a brief moment in time. But that exercise is can be it can be incredibly fruitful, uh, both for the person that is engaged in that activity, but also for the audience. Uh, to which that body of information is communicated. And our hope is that any policy that is formulated um, with response to uh, some of the information that we communicate is not 
merely formulated on its practical uh, significance, but on in a way that is based on the ability for people to empathize with what those people are going through. So that is our hope uh, in, in, in this exercise and in this method.